so everyone um here we are back at our friend andreas's you can see the views this is a tank he's had uh well re rejuvenated basically it's a water tank which was leaking really badly in bad condition he's put a new floor in the bottom and he wants me to make a little bridge that goes over the top here so that's what i'm going to do today so you can see now what i've done here i've chiseled out both ends um, chiseled out the concrete this end to fit a beam in and the same on this end chiseled out the granite so these will sit in here I'll concrete them in or mortar them in yeah and then these boards will sit on the top here like so and then I'll uh, render re-render this up to the top of the board yeah and then the boards will sit along there uh, basically the water level is just about here yeah so with the boards on you won't you won't be able to see the supports underneath so it'll just look like the boards are floating on the water across here which is the desired effect so there we have it that's um, Andreas's floating bridge yeah over his little pond here he's gonna re-waterproof the bottom uh, with a with a waterproofing product it's got a few leaks but nothing very much and there we are so it's like quite a thin looking he wants it to look like it's just floating on the water which i think it will and i've re-rendered the top of this bit in here just got a couple of steps to put inside and we put a tarpaulin over because it's really hot and uh yeah i don't think the concrete's gonna, <laughs> gonna come out very good it's just too hot well there we go looking nice nice little place to to plunge in the hot summer days. I wish it was full of water now, that would be lovely. So, as you know, it's July uh, and August are the two hottest months in Portugal. And um, we have a problem. We have a problem we need to uh, sort out. Come and see this. So, camera okay so one of the advantages of having these um, sandwich panel roofs is that um, they're really easy to walk on and you can as you can see you can get right up to the top of, up here and admire the view but the reason I'm up here is talking about the Sun need I've been trying various methods and what I've done here is uh, taped onto the windows taped on an um, opaque or like a white plastic sheet yeah unfortunately it gets uh, the Sun eventually kills it like it has this one and it's blown away somewhere <laughs> so yeah try and clean this rubbish up a little bit working very well yeah like I said the Sun ruins everything that's not bad so yeah we need to stop the wind the wind we need to stop the Sun getting into I'll show you the, I'll show you why yeah as I was saying there's the window from the inside and what happens if you have sunlight comes through I thought it's gone it was down here but uh, wherever sunlight touches whatever sunlight touches it heats up obviously that's what the Sun does um, on the other window with the I'll put a piece of perspex on that I showed you you don't get direct sunlight you just get light yeah um, but on the outside it's not a permanent solution um, so what I'm going to do now is a temporary solution until we go shopping tomorrow and then I think I'll be able to get some um, like clear oh, opaque cellophane or something self-adhesive to stick on the inside of the window and that should then we should be able to open shut the windows and it'll stay on there and we'll have light but no sunlight direct Lots of webs still. okay so the solution I've come up with is I've cut a patch of the um, 
ruined greenhouse that we had and three strips of wood. Ta -da! And we're just going to sort of wedge it up inside on, onto the window and uh, it should stop direct sunlight until we get some proper cellophane stuff. But before I do that, do some domestic chores. One of Angie's, <laughs> Angie's <laughs> tall enough to get up here, nor am I, but one of Angie's pet, only pet hate, apart from me. That's not true. <laughs> Is cobwebs. I don't mind spiders, but I could never do an Indiana Jones thing and put my hand through webs to get the treasure or to release a lot. I could do it if I had gloves on, but I, I just hate, yeah, hate webs. So, don't worry the cobwebs. There's Maybe. loads of others you could do while you're up there. Yeah. <laughs> we need to do some plastering, I think. Oh. Yeah. So what I thought was, if my theory was... I'll get that on the window, and then I cut these strips of wood, which are only just like three mil uh, hard board type stuff. Is then cut them slightly longer than what they needed. Yeah, that works. It's works ish. And then bend them so the up against this. One. So what we'll try and replicate when we get around to it, when I get the stuff is that, needs to be stuck onto the glass. So as you can see now we've got the light, we don't have sunlight so should keep the kitchen a lot cooler because uh, yesterday we were up to 42 outside here which is rather warm and today it's not so bad in the shade here. We have a brewing thermometer next to the granite which is you know um, we're only up to 30 today, here in the shade, so well, 28 actually. Okay everyone, let's talk you through this one. Metal stud work. Uh, as you can see in that quick time lapse I just put up. Um, really easy uh, metal stud work, yeah? It's, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is 50 mil stuff. Uh, it's basically just um, a shaped piece of galvanized steel. Very thin, yeah? Uh, which is, these bits sit vertically, obviously, and then you've got a track piece that fits in the floor and you would ha normally have one that fits in the ceiling yeah um, and th they all sit inside of that like so yeah it's all galvanized it will never rust there for life um, it will never warp and it won't catch fire and that's another thing uh, it's you know but it, the thing the thing with it is it's used commercially in lots of commercial builds uh, house builds nowadays etc because it's cheap it's less than half the price of timber and it's really quick to put up. There's no dust 
Um, as you can see, you just use a pair of uh, aircraft shears or tin snips um, to cut it to length and then just screw it with ordinary plaster, plasterboard screws. What I've done in this situation and the reason I used it because I would have had to cut and shape a piece of timber and then screw it to this making this sort of weaker really. Um, so what I've done is just bent the tops of the, the metal um, framing over here and put in uh, tech, fixed it to that with a tech screw as you can see out of focus. The tech screw. Yay. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, that took about 10 minutes to put that frame up. And now all I've got to do is cut the plasterboard to size and screw it to there. Simple. I'd just like to add the bottoms I did fix with a screw, uh, as you saw in from this side, because I know there's nothing going on the back. But um, to, f to fix these properly, there's a proper tool, a bit like um, it, it clamps. It, it crimps a hole in it and that and punches a piece of this through the other piece so it's just held together with its own metal basically it punches a hole and one of the the tag that punches through it just sticks through the other piece and holds the two together really simple stuff okay uh, that's that cut to size we'll offer it up Right across, job done. You can see how much it doesn't fit by. Because, <laughs> oh dear, it doesn't fit very well because this, see, is touching the wall here, and I think there's, a, there's a gap there. So I'm going to have to scribe this end in and recut it, and then we'll refix it again. So I've had to go and get some in my workshop, super long um, drywall screws. The reason you use drywall screws, specific drywall screws, because they've uh, been treated with this black stuff. Uh, don't ask me all the technical things about it. If I can zoom in, uh, which means that uh, when you plaster over them, they won't rust, and then the rust shows through the plaster and then the paint, and it's a nightmare. These are all treated so they don't rust and don't stain your paintwork. That's why they're specific plasterboard screws. Okay. Whoa. Sorry. What are you doing here? Also, what I've done is marked the floor where the uprights are, so it's easier then to just mark these so I know where the studs are. Centre the studs there.
So I don't flip my... Yeah. in there just because no <laughs> okay so there it is one stud white wall uh, on metal studs yeah um, just to show you something different guys so a couple of tops etc and for me cheaper simple as that uh, it's very hot here now because we're up in the apex and um, it's been a hot day and I'm going for a swim before I go for a swim, I'd just like to explain a little bit. When you're doing building jobs, plan it out. Think about what you, where your furniture's going and stuff. Because we're going to have a double bed here, facing the windows, facing the views, yeah. This is a solid wall next to the bed, and the door for the, for the storage space will be here, which is past the end of the bed. So you can open the door, yeah, without it hitting the bed and being in the way, basically. And if it's past the end of the bed, then when you bring stuff up the store, it's easy to get to, in and out, yeah? If I put the door here, it, you'd have to squeeze in beside the bed, ridiculous. So, what I'm saying is pre-planning everything is, uh, yeah, what, you know, think about everything that's going to happen in a room before you start putting walls up in stupid places, which I have done before on many occasions. <laughs> so there we go, both bits of the wall up, just going to make a door there now, and uh, job done. Oh, and clear up my mess. Well, since I've done this, it's, it's already started falling down, and we've been shopping, and I thought I, I thought I saw it in one of the Chinese shops here. Um, it's a roll of white cellophane, so it's self-adhesive as well. And this is what I wanted to do, but at the time when we had strong sunlight coming through, I didn't have the product. But, oh. Give it a bit of a clean. And so she doesn't clean it because she can't reach. These things. It's really bright light looking through there. Get rid of all the spiders. Hey? Get rid of all the spiders. Right. So I'm hoping this fits. Okay. Self adhesive, they said. It'll stick to itself, that's what it means. All oh, right, certainly doing that, right? I don't want to turn the air bubbles on it. I'm <laughs> 
the most awkward stuff in the world. Well, I hope it's um, that's in enough light. I don't want to make the kitchen darker. I just don't want the sunlight. So everybody, um, as you can probably hear in the distance over the wind, we're on our way down to feed the pigs. And they're very excited to see us as you can tell. Hi guys. Do a swap over? Over I know, look, I've got, um, what Nick's, are these called? Nick's braving it with his sandals They do on. like toes, I'm afraid, until they've eaten. Here it goes, look. Let's bribe him with a piece bribe of apple. Bribe him with a piece oh, of toes are much nicer. Toes. <laughs> Let's get some toes. Hang on. Right, guys. <laughs> oh, stop it. Cindy. Cindy, you're so greedy. She's uncontrollable, that Cindy. It must be in the name. <laughs> Okay, guys. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about these. I see little fluffy balls of fun, but they're not fluffy. But um, these guys, we chose put Cooney Cooney pigs because they are so. They're not like pigs. <laughs> they're just so. They're so gentle. Uh, obviously, non aggressive. Um, they're so gentle on the ground. They don't. If you look around, all they do is. Just take off the top layer of whatever's growing on it. Yeah, they don't dig up anything. They just they just turn the ground. They just take away the vegetation, and they're slowly working through this area. Bear in mind, there are only three little things at the minute, but they're slowly working their way through the vegetation, and it'll all end up like this, which is exactly what we want. Exactly why we got them. Yeah. Um, if you look in their house. Look, they've been in here. How long have they been in here now? Well, they're three months old. Uh, so we've had them about five weeks. I don't know if, right, I, if I pass that to you, it might be a bit easier. Okay. So we've we are, whoop. <laughs> so we've had these guys for. Hang on. But we've. Totally, we've had them a month. Oh, we've had these guys for a month. Yeah, and uh, as you can see in their little house, uh, it's perfectly clean. There's no, they don't smell at all. The house is perfectly clean. Um, yeah, just and you know. You never have to clean it out. It's, it's fantastic. Look at, look at this. Just, it's just clean. It's, it's perfectly clean. I've got a decent shirt on. And at the moment, at this size, the size that they are, um, they cost us what? Two, three euros a week to feed them. Not. So yeah, a, a bag of pig food, uh, 30, ki 30 kilo bag lasts about a month for these guys. Maybe a bit longer than a month, but. Um, yeah, we obviously give them treats as well. They've got apples tonight, but they're going to have lots of, uh, we're growing watermelons. And we've got four big, uh, you can see one in the distance here, uh, persimmon trees. And to be honest, there's, they, they produce, the trees produce about 100 kilos of persimmons. And we can't eat that many, so um, these guys are in for a big treat. Uh, I'm just going to show you around their little area here a minute. I mean, we've trained, they've all trained to the, to the pig nipple now, so they put their mouth on here. And water comes out, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, we need a bucket of water for that. Okay. Um, I'll get that in a minute. So, the, the area they're in inside the electric fence, which, to be honest, sometimes I forget to turn on and doesn't seem to bother them. They don't seem to want to go anywhere. But <coughs> as you can see here, they're slowly just turning it into this this type of land here. Uh, and they only poo in one place, and uh, poo and wee in one place, over here. Yeah, which is the furthest away from, so here, lots of poo and wee. This is the furthest away from their two areas of activity, which is over there where they feed, and over here where they wallow. So the wallow I can see is leaking. That's my fault. 
I probably did. Yeah. Oh dear. Not all done here. That's better. So they've got a very full wallow. Um, basically here we're 40 degrees during the day at the minute and they need a wallow just to keep them cool, you know? But um, very easy to do. Literally that's like two, if, if you didn't have a little stream beside it like I've got, it's two, three buckets of water on this side, at the size they are now. And uh, yeah, they need that to, get, to create mud to get on their skin to keep them cool in the hot sun. And then what they're doing with the land, as they're trimming through, you can see here that we've got green grass coming through. Yeah, for where they've been eating. I know it's probably a bit greener because uh, it's right beside the water. But um, yeah, they don't look at the, they don't dig all this area here, where it's a bit. There's a few long bits left over. Yeah, all this area was like this. Yeah, so see the difference between this and this. They're slowly working through it and eating all the long stuff because they they push these grasses over and they eat all the seed heads. Uh, so really good for cleaning the ground. I mean, and and not digging things up. And at the moment I'm filming, I'm stood right in amongst their poo, and it doesn't smell. They don't smell at all. They're not like they they're not what people say are oh, smelly pigs or whatever. They're um. Yeah, we're just so, so pleased with them. We got them in the shade, because like I said, it does get very hot here. But, uh, well, the other thing as well, this, this piece will be extended out to cover that other orange tree. Yeah, so if you look in the distance here, there's a wall over there. So we'll be extending this fence as they get older, right over to that wall. And uh, they'll have three times the size of area that they have now. But at the moment, they're, they're only nickel. And... Um, and beautiful. Cooney Cooney pigs are what they call a small to medium sized breed. They, they don't get much bigger than this adult. And to be honest, these guys aren't going to get much more than 100 kilos maybe when they're fully adult. So one of Cindy's biggest boars, Chris, he's about, I'd estimate about 150 kilos. Maybe 170. It's a big boy, yeah? But he, you know, he's a boar and the boars are, are obviously larger than the females anyway. But um, yeah, so they're not too big. Uh, they get all the fat in the right places. The, the meat on them, if you want to breed them for meat, is actually red and marbled. So it's a really rare type of type of uh, meat. And I'm told, don't know it yet, but I'm told, really tasty. We will be uh, breeding Cindy here with an unrelated male, hopefully from a, another country. Um, because Cindy Vine is, is the person in Portugal to get them from. Cindy has British registered Cooney Coonies and French Cooney Coonies. So, um, guys, think about this. If you want something to clean your land, pets for the kids, look, they don't bite. They, they've just been fed though, so they're, they're a bit nippy before they get fed. But no, they're, they're really friendly. They're good with kids. Uh, apparently you can train them to be pets. Um, if you see Luke and Sarah's channel, she's trained them to do all sorts of crazy stuff. They're sitting and I don't know if she's got them doing uh, rolling over and barking yet, but... Uh, oinking. Oinking. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're just they're just so gentle and, and lovely pigs. Uh, I, I couldn't say enough about them, to be honest. But um, yeah, for us, they're going to clear all this land and keep it clear. And uh, yeah, it's going to be... Hello, Wilbur. Hello, Wilbur. And uh, you can see that they are quite friendly. And they'll come up and well, they've all got their own characters, but yeah, they will come up. If you if I walk away now, they'll follow me, you know. And they know they're not going to get any more food. Look at this big fat belly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're they're just just great. So if you're thinking of having one for a pet, uh, if you're thinking of having a breeding pair, uh, you wouldn't have piglets for a year. If, they, if you bought most piglets, it would be another year before you had piglets, maybe a bit longer. Um, but uh, they're, they they farrow on their own. They're, they're, nat they're natural. You know they don't need any assistance. If you like, if you go and see Cindy's videos on Cindy Vine on her YouTube channel, Cindy Vine. Yeah, um, she's just had a litter of ten, and uh, she's going to have a few more. I do believe she may even have had one today. 
not her personally. I was but, going um, to say that'd be uh, interesting. But uh, yeah, if you you know if you guys need any pigs, go along to her YouTube channel, Cindy Vine, and um, she's got all her information up there. You'll be able to contact her through private message or whatever, and uh, yeah, buy some for pigs because they're just awesome, and we might get another one. Maybe, maybe. Look at this little Wilbur nose. Hello. Wilbur. What are you doing? No, you don't. What? What was that? What? What? Hey? Let's see if we can get you scratchy over. Scratchy over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's, it's been filmed. He knows he's being filmed. Yeah. Look at that, she does that. Yeah. Oh, oh, there she goes. Oh, Honestly, Cindy, what you like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Rusty Duffy Biggs. What are you doing in there? Looking for toes. Looking for toes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, they think toes are edible. <laughs> Brave piggies. Oh. What? Really? Hello, Cindy. Hello, Cindy. Yeah. You must have more food somewhere. I haven't got any more food. Do you want an orange? I can go and get you an orange. Hey? <laughs> How are they fascinated with toes? Look at them. Maybe they like cheese. Oh, you're so lovely. You're so lovely and cute. <laughs> go and get them an orange. Fresh water. Some cool, clear water. Yeah, so these guys drink at the moment as they are. Oh, look, treats for you. Sit, sit there, sit there. Sit. No, 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 no. She's... Sit. Hey, hey. Napoleon. Yeah. You're leaning on the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So these guys are drinking at the moment about half a bucket between three of them a day, which, um, plus what I spill. Uh, yeah, which is... Um, Quite a lot of water, so you, you know you need to take that into consideration. But uh, Cindy, here's your other half. Ow! Funny way. How's that on back? <laughs> yeah, so Cooney Coonies, gotta love them. Cooney Cooney, uh, they, they originate from New Zealand and they think they're a native pig crossed with a, an Asian pig which is brought in by obviously through shipping and what have you um, but their uh, kuni kuni is Maori for fat and round which uh, they're going to get <laughs> and the little wattles they have here hanging down Wilbur's got a couple Napoleon's got a couple which are a bit lower down and Cindy hasn't got any uh, again in the, I think it's in the Maori language the, the little wattles are called piri piri which in, in Portugal means pepper which is just you know, chilli pepper, yeah. which is crazy. Yes. Yes. What are you doing? You've been nosy. Hey, you've been nosy. Well, they're just so gentle, aren't you? Hey? multicolored 
lawn mowers. Because <laughs> mainly that they just eat grass, um, apart from the stuff that we feed them. If they're in the wild, they would just be eating grass, um, which is I assume what they've, a trick they've learned in New Zealand, because New Zealand has lots of grass. Um, so yeah, it's their natural, natural sort of food. Yes, you're very inquisitive, you lot. Your little long eyelashes, eh? You pretty boy. No, he's got white ones on one side and black on the other. <laughs> yeah. I have no more food. No more food. Only toes. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Napoleon. What's going on? Hey. See, he sits. He's very good at sitting. Good boy. Right. Bye bye. Be good. Doing guys, we'll do some wallowing. Come on, let's do some wallowing. Hey, eh? you hear the the bee eaters? <laughs> no, that's my shirt. You can't eat that. As you can see, the Hokkaido pumpkins are coming on really well. One there, one there. I think this plant, one plant, has about 14 on it, so it's mint here. And the other one, um, we're pretty sure this one's a type of butternut squash. Uh, this, this is a nice sized fruit here. Not quite ready yet, but um, we're hoping they'll have orange flesh inside. So I think they will, but we'll see. And all the little random squash and watermelon I planted the other day all seem to have taken now. They're starting to grow. Um, I know some of you guys have said I've planted them too close, etc. But they were just left over and there is lots of food in here for plants. So, uh, yeah, I put lots more pig poo in. So they've got lots to feed on. We'll just see how it goes. It doesn't really matter. Because they were just going to die in the pots anyway. Um, a quick update on the gem squash that you saw me planting. Uh, here they are now, being well watered all the time. Because I'm in and out the outdoor shower. <laughs> And uh, we've got our first little fruit, whether it'll turn into fruit or not. Yeah, I don't know, but there's lots of flowers coming. So, um, yeah, doing all right, all of them. Okay, guys, that's it from us this Friday. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your likes and subscribes. Thanks for ringing that little notification bell. Ding, ding. And um, well, thanks we, for your super thanks yeah. as well. We need to prepare for a hot weekend we've got coming up. This yeah. is, it's, yeah, we're, we're in for a, a hot one. And uh, don't forget, if you need some Cooney Cooney Pigs, check go out Cindy, check out Vine. Cindy Vine's yeah. uh, YouTube channel. She's got all the details there. You'll be able to contact her. And they're just wonderful. I mean, like like <laughs> tiny little lawnmowers. They're, they're amazing. And, and the uh, rate of diesel and petrol at the moment. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, yeah that's yeah. the cheap lawnmowers as well. Well, and also you can, because over here there's a, there's um, like a mowing strimming ban when it's red alert for fire risk and things. So obviously you can have thing little piggies yeah. still land clearing, and you're not going to be falling foul of the law. Okay, guys. So don't forget like, subscribe, bell, all that stuff, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. So I just bought one of the <laughs> one of these. Inflatable um, uh, loungy things. Yeah. Supposedly inflatable, but there's no wind. No, you can swirl around like yeah. a ballet dancer. You need to pirouette and stuff. That's it. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah, nothing's going in. You're getting there. You're getting there. You... Like now.
Like, no. Gilly's gonna bite it. This is not filling out, this is nothing going in. Good morning, honey bunnies. How are you all doing? All ten are looking good. All good this evening. All sleeping, looking very well fed. <laughs> 